Jesus is Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He loves you. Hallelujah. Wonderful. What a wonderful time we have in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. He came into this world, God Almighty in the flesh. He died for us. He rose again. And the same Jesus is coming again for those who believe in him, those who have accepted him as their Lord and Savior. So this is the good news we are bringing to you. So let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Get someone to listen to this program, not just today, but the ones who have all said in the past, let them listen. And they'll know who they are in Christ and what they can do by the power of the Spirit of God in them. Again, welcome to Good News from El Paso. Honey, please, can you welcome our wonderful audience? Yes, please. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. For this is the day the Lord has made. You have connected to him and you are welcome to enjoy this wonderful good news. And the good news is working in your life. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining. Wonderful. To God be the glory. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray today, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is with us. And what we are going to say today is inspired by the Holy Spirit. I will bring understanding and wisdom to your children so that they will live by it and begin to enjoy your glory and your blessings in their lives. We thank you, Father, that this is so today in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Our topic today is about true salvation. We are going to talk about what apostles preached about salvation. What is it that apostles preached that does not lead to salvation? That's what we are going to discuss today. What did apostles preach? Though they preached it, they did not recognize it and say, okay, this is now salvation. Honey, what is it that they preached that does not lead to salvation? Okay. Now, before we go there, we're going to look at some scriptures. Let us look at what actually the Bible de defines brings salvation. Let us look at the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16. For God so greatly loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Okay, let us also look at the book of Romans chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Okay, so that brings us to a question today. What is it the apostles preached? Though they preached it, but they did not say it will lead you to salvation. What was it, honey? The apostles preached what the scripture told us, that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Jesus was born of a virgin. Now, that, if you believe only that, it will not lead you to salvation, is the fact. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and she became pregnant with Jesus. So he was born of a virgin, he was born of a virgin birth. That's it. So, but if you go about trusting that, just that, and think that will bring you to the throne of grace, to the kingdom of God, that's not complete. See, John 3, 16, and uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 10 to 11. If you do those now, but now on this also, they preached, just like the Bible told us, that Mary was a virgin. Okay, so Mary was a virgin. If you believe that only, there will be no salvation there. So it is important that you find out the whole truth, half truth. This is half truth right here. So the whole truth is what we read earlier. 
So it's important that we focus on the whole truth and not religion. This is religion. And it's, it can only lead you to error. You don't want that. But it's the fact. So let's go for the whole truth. That is true. Let us go for the whole truth. You see, some of the things, most of, some of the, things the, the apostles preached, they were just for a moral character. If they preach that, okay, you should not be moral, you should not commit fornication, you should not commit adultery, you, cannot, you should not live, be a thief. Those are good things they preached. But they preach those things to tell you that now that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you shouldn't be doing those things. But if you say, okay, I'm not, I'm, I don't do those things, I don't steal, I don't commit adultery, I don't fornicate, I don't lie, and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not saved. So it's not what your, your moral character does not lead you to salvation. So what leads you to salvation is John 3, 16 and Romans 10, 10 to 11. You receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you confess him with your mouth that he is your Savior and that he is your Lord. And you say you are doing, some people say, oh, we are doing a good work. We have set, set up a, a, this thing to help the poor, uh, to help the poor in, always in Africa anyway, and uh, Russia and uh, China and everywhere. They say, well, I'm doing that. Therefore, I'm doing a good work. Those good works are not going to help you in any way. They make you feel happy. They make you feel good. But they will not lead you to salvation. You are still a lost sinner. And after you've done all that, you die and leave this body, you are going to hell. There's no question about it. But receiving Jesus Christ and doing, today, doing those things, the Bible says will give you another blessing, another crown when you go to heaven. We don't know what that is. But that will be an addition to your salvation. So what did they preach or emphasize that actually leads to salvation? We can say today, what did apostles then preach that leads to salvation? Though we've heard it, but let us look at it again. Okay, so <clears throat> there is a reason why we are uh, bringing this topic today to you. See, in a part of the world, there is a part of the world where some people are preaching that they preach the half truth, but not the whole truth. It's important that you don't follow religion. Follow Jesus Christ. Follow the whole truth. And the word of God, the Bible, is the whole truth. So they will come and tell you, oh, they believe in Virgin Mary. These are not Christians. They are religious people. They believe in virgin birth. Uh, no, they believe in Virgin Mary. They believe that Jesus Christ is the prophet. And he, he, yeah, he did miracle. But they believe some of the things that that they are one with you, Christians, that you are not, uh, you know, we are supposed to love one another as God has commanded us. So they twisted everything, just like the devil would twist the, the word of God. And before you know it, you're like, what am, you get confused. That's the idea. So it's important that you know the foundation. When you know the foundation, you will not be deceived. It doesn't matter how long they spin the lie or the half truth, you will not be deceived. But if you don't know the whole truth, then you will agree with them and then end up where they want you to be. So just like we read John 3, 16, for God loves greatly, loves, loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that will believe in him and confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But a lot of people think Jesus Christ is cannot, how can one person be the only way to God? See, that's what they think. That's what they want you to argue. And they want to argue about what God said. Argument, the word of God is not for argument, it's for believing. And it's important that believe this truth and then that will lead you to salvation. But if you follow the spin, the lie out there, that twists the half-truth and stay on the half-truth, even in the media, even the important, important uh, characters in the media, they will tell you, oh, Jesus Christ cannot be the only way. 
And because you have believed them for too long, and I thank God for those people that will stand up for those characters in the media and debunk their lies. Those are the true Christians. Because what God said is what stands. There is no ifs and buts about it. You believe in what God said in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. I know we read uh, 10, verses 10 and 11. Let's look at verse 9. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you hear that? So the half truth is what they want you. Oh, they believe in Mary, Virgin Mary. They believe in Jesus. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a prophet. He was a prophet. He did miracle. Well, <laughs> as a Christian, this is the truth. Believe this truth. The other one is half truth. And the devil is all about half truth. And if anyone is spinning the devil's lies, then they are under the devil's command. We just pray that they will come to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so that they will be saved. And that's what we need to preach. You, that is a Christian, you need to spread that good news. You need to stand up and say, no, that's the half truth. The whole truth is this. Because we have to represent our King Jesus, the Lord over all, and not allow the people to be deceived when we are able to stand against the half truth and debunk the lies of the wicked one. To God Almighty be the glory. That is very true. So the, the, the apostles emphasized on one thing that will bring salvation. And one thing only, that you will believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and that he rose again. Even believing that alone, believing that alone won't save you. What will save you? When you say now, I receive him as my Lord and I confess that he's my Lord. I receive him as my savior. Now I'm confessing that he's my Lord. That is where the salvation comes. Now, by believing that Jesus was born of Virgin Mary, Mary was a virgin, Jesus was a prophet, that believing, and you say, I hate you because you don't believe that Jesus died for your sin. No, I don't hate you. No Christian hates you. Why? Because a Christian is bound by the word of God to love you. It doesn't matter what you believe. A Christian loves you. And that is why he doesn't want you to go to hell. That is why he's preaching the word of God to you. Because he loves you. He has, it has been revealed to him the horror of hell, the terribleness of hell. Hell is eternity. And because of that love, in spite of what you are believing, he loves you. But he wants, to know, he wants you to know that believing, oh, I'm living a pure life. I'm not living an immoral life. I'm not lying. I'm not fornicating. I'm not cheating. That won't help you. And when, you tell, when he tells you that or when she tells you that, it means that she, is he or she loves you so passionately because he knows where that is going to lead you. So anyone say, they say, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, there are so many ways to do this. There are so many ways to do that. That's true. There are so many ways to do so many things. But there's only one way to receive salvation. There's only one way to God. And that one way is Jesus Christ. There are no two other ways. There are no two other ways as far as God is concerned. So preaching Christ, sacrifice, and helping others, that is my duty as a Christian, to preach to you that, hey, you are committed this sin, but God had made a way out for you. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and confess that he's your Lord, he will give you the Holy Spirit. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to stop doing these things. But if you think you are going to stop all these things by yourself, you are lying. Don't even try. You can't. He said, because of yourself, you can do nothing. So if of yourself, you can do nothing, why are you trying? Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that he died for you. Cry out to the Holy Spirit to teach you 
help you believe, help you, help you walk in truth. And when that happens, you see yourself a changed person. You cannot change yourself. Only God, through his Holy Spirit, will receive you, wash you with the blood of his son, and make you saved and lead you. Say he will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Because when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he puts his name on you. And for his name's sake, he will not let your foot slip. For his name's sake, he will guide you in the path of righteousness. Also, so, also um, to give you more, more, more scriptures that, can, uh, that you can stand on, look at Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 to 33. We are not going to read it, but go check it out. Matthew 10, 32 to 33. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you, conf if you do not confess me before men, if you, don't, if, you, if you don't tell people about me, then I will not tell my Father about you. It's your choice. Even in Acts chapter 10, also, verses 42 to 43. L let's read that one. Acts chapter 10, 42 and 43. Got it? Okay, let's go. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of dead, the dead and the living. To him give all the prophets, the prophets gave, gave the witness. They gave witness of him, Jesus, that through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sin. So it is important. That, that is very important. So whoever believes in him receives salvation. So what then stops a person from being saved? Let us look at the book of Hebrews chapter 18. Uh, sorry, sorry, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. What does he say here? But I say... Have they not be heard? Chapter what? Chapter 3, I'm sorry. Hebrews Hebrew 3. No, you're in Roman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hebrews 3, chapter 18 and uh, 18 two. to 19. He says, And to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter uh -huh. In because of unbelief. Okay. They didn't believe. That's the reason they didn't enter. Not because they didn't offer the sacrifices, but they didn't enter. So actually then, what makes a person <laughs> not to be saved? Just like we read in Hebrews chapter 3, 18 and 19. If you believe, you will enter. Enter where? Enter the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you believe and obey, so it's important that you obey when you believe. If the word of God say, do this, go do it. That means you believed it and you did it. Because the word of God is for us to do what God says. You can believe it and don't do it. It won't benefit you. But if you believe it and do it, then it will benefit you. We can think of dozens of things that people believe in God they believe about God, but they go about and do, it, and do their own thing. And you wonder why some people go, where is God in this? God is still where he has been <laughs> oh, that, that, that question tickles me. It's important that you follow the whole instruction. You give your children command or direction. If they hear you, okay, they believe you, but you, they go about and do their own stuff. That's not going to result in, in any good thing. You come back and you get mad at somebody. So it's important that we hear and we obey. And we obey by doing what God says. Yes, that's very true. Let us take some practical example. Why it is necessary for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior before these things are counted unto you. Take, for example, you have a very rich man in a foreign country. And he brings a bunch of money to the United States Treasury and says, this is my tax. 
they looked into the book. He doesn't have a social security number. So he's not an American. So that money will go into what they call miscellaneous. So it has no place in the American monetary system or the, what they have set up to be. So though he brought that money, like any other American br brings in his or her money, but he doesn't have a social security number. He's not registered. So it really doesn't mean anything. So if you, as, a, as somebody, you are coming to God, well, I do a good work, I don't steal, I don't do this, all those things will go into religious miscellaneous. You are not registered. God will look, your name is not in the last book of life. So everything you're doing is a fast. It doesn't, it, it's not, it, it has no place in the kingdom of God. But a poor man in America who makes maybe a thousand dollars a month and he pays one dollar into his tax, that has meaning because he has a social security number. But this man with the millions that he has brought, his money is miscellaneous because he doesn't have a number. He's not registered. Does that make sense? That's why it's very, very important for you and me to be registered in order that whatever thing we do will be accounted for, be added onto us and accounted for. So now we look at who is the true religion. And now we are talking about here true salvation. You have religion, you have salvation. You look at Isaac and you look at Ishmael. Isaac is of the promise that God promised Abraham. And we, the children of God, are under Isaac's promise, under Abraham's promise. Ishmael is not now. He was of Abraham, but he was not of God. That was of the flesh. So it's important that we not combine and get, then when the son of Ishmael comes and say, well, we are all one, God loves us, we are from the, you need to be careful. <laughs> so because somebody can spin a lie as long as possible, that doesn't make it truth. The truth is, if you are under Isaac, you know who you are. If you are under Ishmael, you know who you are. One is an opposer of what God said. <laughs> That's very true, but remember, being a son of Abraham, <laughs> does not bring you salvation. And being of Ish 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 Ishmael does not bring you salvation. Both the children of Abraham and the children of Ishmael, both of them will have to come to Christ. Christ is the only way. So if a, children of Abra a child of Abraham says, well, I'm of Abraham, therefore I I'm saved, you are lying. And if this one says, well, I'm also a child of Abraham, the child of Ishmael will say, well, I'm also a, a child of Abraham, therefore I'm saved, you are lying. The only one saved in both of them is the one who accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God promised the salvation of mankind through the lineage of Abraham. That's what he did. But he didn't say because the, the Christ is coming through the lineage of Abraham, therefore every Jew is saved. No, it's not. They too will have to accept Jesus Christ to be saved. So also will the children of Ishmael accept Jesus Christ to be saved. So it's like, I mean, I'm, this is plain. Yes. We have to understand this truth. Thank you very much. This is a deep study. You know, you go, well, well, no, it's deep. You know why? Because it's simple, these simple things that take people to the other side of the road. Or, the, you know, <laughs> if they don't hear the true gospel, the true gospel is God is exposing these things so that we will stay alert because the world we are in now is in such a way that lies are flying all over the place. If you are not careful, you believe the lie. And before you know it, you are, you, you, did it, you, do, you won't even know what hit you. So he wants us to be alert, to be, to be on alert, be the, 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 be on the wall, watchman on the wall. Be alert, be sensitive. Don't sleep. This is not the time to sleep. So, my brothers and my sisters, so whether you are a child of Abraham or you are a child of Ishmael or none of the both, we are going to ask you now to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and confess that he is your Lord, you will be saved. That is the only way 
No religion will take you to heaven. No birth from where you are born will take you to heaven. The only thing that will take you to heaven is the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, honey, please, will you tell our brothers and sisters, tell them to come to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord. Congratulations. You have watched up to this point. And remember, it's not of him that will it, nor him that run it. It is God that shows mercy. His love is speaking to your heart, speaking to, to all of us. And it's his love that constrains us, that makes us love whosoever and love everybody. But that does not mean we leave ourselves open to be abused and to be lied to. So now repeat from your heart. Say, Jesus, I believe you are the son of God who came in the flesh, suffered and died for me. I believe you died and you rose again. I ask you to forgive me my sins. I ask you now, be the savior of my life. I make you the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live the victorious life. Thank you. I receive my new life. I receive eternal life. If you have made this confession, welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the household of God. And now start reading the Bible to know the God that is your father, the God that, is you, that you serve. From John going right, and if you need to know how Jesus walked when he was on this earth, Matthew. And then read going right. When you finish that one, that's to tell you this is the life you live. And then go back to Genesis and see how God dealt with his enemies. So my brothers and my sisters, be strong in the Lord and by the power of his might. Understand one thing, God loves you so passionately, so, so wonderfully that he has to take flesh, come, in, come into the world and died so that you will not go to hell because he knows the horror of hell. He understands, he, he created hell. He knows what it is and he doesn't want you to be there. So don't go there. Don't choose to go there. He loves you. God Jesus loves you. Christ is Lord. He's Lord, he loves Yesterday, you and Yesterday, today and forever. And he is madly in love with you. Amen. Jesus is Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he loves you.